this is Grandmaster Wang Hao against Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. So these are two board ones that some of you may have heard of before. <laughs> um, if you haven't, you yeah. know, they're in the top top 30 players in the world, both of them. And in rapid chess, they're even better. Hikaru is number two in the world in rapid chess and Wang Hao is number 10. So in this format, these guys are are high up there. So get a complicated opening yeah. pawn gambit. Fancy. If black lets white play d4, that's a clear advantage for white. So got to play that aggressive move. Hmm. Ooh, fancy move from uh, from Wang Hao to relieve the pressure here. Normally you'd be playing moves like rook to e1, but that may not yeah, help I, you I much. Yeah, I was really looking... Uh... It, it was looking pretty good for Wang after ninety four, but you know Hikaru played this very well. But yeah, ninety four was a very good way to untangle the position. Yeah. So, I just got a message saying that I have unlocked some status called affiliate. Do you know what that is? Path to affiliate. Uh, I, believe, I, I believe that means that you can receive subscriptions now. Wow. All right, so it's a race for who will be my first subscription. Um, all right, so we are now affiliates. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if white plays a move like rook to e1, the problem is that the white queen can't move, so this a1 rook can't get over. So basically, if black makes some move with the queen, I don't know if this is the right one, but whatever, moves the queen somewhere, then basically all white's done by playing rook e1 is traded the f1 rook for the a8 rook. Um basically black's attack here is and much stronger than it queen. right he's lost time at the same time right he's invested two moves in doing that so black developed the queen and, and the a8 rook so black's position is right. much stronger than it was moments ago um yeah nice calm development from Hikaru. Really nothing, yeah. obviously strong counterplay um yeah so uh, so actually a very strong move from Wang Hao here to play knight e4, huh? Knight e4. Very, no, very, yeah, I, I mean, very nice. And that, that liquidated really most of the, most of the other pieces. Right, so here, um, so Hikaru must have wanted to play rook takes e4. Why didn't he do this? Why not? I think queen d3 here. Uh, I think maybe queen d3 here, yeah. Queen d3 with the threat of bishop f6, queen e4. So you could retreat or the rook. Did. Or simply what? Or simply queen e4. We'll do similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so black could move the queen to defend the rook and take a bad structure on the king side. Um, like this, right? Or I mean, this is not this is not something to do. Or retreat the rook, and then presumably white just plays queen d4, and actually regains exactly. their extra pawn. But they've untangled everything and traded pieces. Right. Exactly. So this is definitely not good news for black. This doesn't look like great news for black, either. Probably white. Right. Although this might be playable for black to some extent, depending on what white has here. You know, black might be able to just defend e4 and d4 enough. I mean, even here I could just take e4, right? Oh, you're lucky you have that, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, very nice. That refutes things for black. Black can't get the knight because the queens are hanging and if you trade here. Oh, very nice. So rookie one is, is going to be strong for white. Black's going to try this. We're going to hope that the same tactics all work for white in this position. And that we still have f5, rook e4, f4, queen d4. I mean, probably this, this one will rise. But... So rookie one, knight e1, queen a2, queen d4, with a clear advantage for white in this end game. 
I mean, like, you don't even have to go into this. I mean, I just think the the position here is is just better for White, even if you don't start trading Rooks in the file. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we don't have time to investigate. Uh, so, but we've seen the idea of what he wants to do with Rook E4. So, Hikaru just played H6. Right. Queen F6, Rook E1. And now, I mean, it looks like his position is extremely unpleasant extremely unpleasant um he's down a pawn yeah. he's got an isolated pawn and i'm starting to think that maybe uh given what happened in the game it's possible that i th that queen takes d4 maybe was a better option yeah i'm not sure what the downside would be on queen takes d4 that seems very good what's he afraid of i, th I think i think what he was afraid of was just takes takes and you know maybe he just liked his, his position better here like, like the idea yeah. here after rookie one is if he puts his queen on d3, white is completely, completely just much better. Mm -hmm. But I uh, maybe he maybe he missed d3 and just underestimated how much counterplay that black would get on the queen side. Yeah, I mean he may not have thought d3 was very good. D3 was a, a shock to me. I didn't realize how good it was. I mean if it's really good, another option for white is queen d3, right? That locks up everything white wants. Rookie one, then um. Yeah, and maybe I, a4. <laughs> I was very, I was very, very surprised why I didn't just play queen d3 here. Yeah. Uh, um, it feels like a very tough order, situation for Hikaru. In, in this case, right. I think queen d3 would have been a much better choice than the queen. one. Yeah. All right. So, um, so queen d3 and rookie one, this is a clear advantage for white, very, very close to a decisive advantage, basically. So what's amazing is what Hikaru drums up with this move d3, but we're gonna run out of time to really go over it um, properly. He he creates an imbalance in his favor on the queen side here um, with this approach. And... Which ended up winning him a piece if we can... Um... Yeah, which Maybe eventually even still. wins the game for him. He doesn't just like save this with his counterplay and draw. He eventually wins this game. Yeah. I think right. Wang Hao should have played yeah. queen b3 here instead of rook c1 first. Yeah. Um, that's what I had expected at the time. If you chase the black queen away, then you're free to start expanding in the center. And now your center is pretty valuable. And if black trades, yeah, maybe, maybe. then this rook is well placed here, I think. Yeah, I think definitely Wang Hao, like, you know, he had some he had a couple of you know, mishaps in in this position. Mm -hmm. Maybe overestimated it a little bit. Yeah, if you're going for queen b3, then it makes sense to leave the rook on a1, I would think. So I think rook c1 right. maybe maybe not the best. Rook c8. Now, maybe trading queens gives gives way too much counterplay, so maybe you should just play rook c2 now. Um, oh no, rook c2, there's bishop h2. That's yeah. why he couldn't. That's why he couldn't. Oh, that, that, that would be disastrous. Yeah, that would be disastrous. Um, so, yes, yeah, so he maybe goes queen b3, yeah. takes. But now this move, bishop f4, this is very strong. I don't think that white has an advantage after this. I mean, I think if he does, it's very minimal. Yeah. But, because basically, uh, black wins control of the C3 square, everybody. And this all this simplification down a pawn. But often simplification, if you're the one who ends up with the open file for your rook, you can just like harvest some stuff and really get a lot out of it. Um, so simplification can be, actually, can be actually quite good in a position where you're pressing an initiative sometimes. Um, so after rook a1, I mean, and if you trade rooks, you still can't stop rook c3. So this is even worse for white, because there's, like, no counterplay. You've wasted a tempo on that trade. Um, yeah. You don't have a rook guarding your back I mean, rank things now. That, things have already gotten out of hand here. So, um, so rook a1's correct, and then rook c3, and black's got this fantastic counterplay. He wins a pawn, and... I guess we're going to have to get off Chess TV and let somebody else um, 
and uh, let somebody else on. But maybe mm -hmm. Josiah will get will will get back on in one minute and uh, and finish looking at the last few moves of this on on our channel. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I mean, let's... I don't. Th I don't think we have to. Uh... I think they just take over, don't they? Yeah, but I wanna. I want to raid this fellow. You I, know, I don't like what happens is the previous show raids the next show, etc. So. Oh, I see. So we're gonna raid them, give them an audience, so people can see, you know, can get exposed to this other streamer, and then, okay. um, and then if that logs us off, we'll get back on, in a second. I don't have All to right. get off my channel. Someone's saying, but if if this raid logs me off, I will. Um, I will just restart our stream in a second. Okay. Yeah. You've got a big fan there, Josiah. Copper's been asking you for a date all <laughs> night. All right. Interesting. We're going to raid. Don't raid if you continue streaming. And we're raiding the Manas. I'm just going to restart my stream after I raid. It's okay. I mean, that, that's fine, right? That's fine. All right. So we've raided. I don't know if I'm still streaming to my channel or not, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll figure this out in a second. And now I have rook e8 check. Dupress, oh my God, oh my God. Emily, oh my god, this is amazing. Thank you, Dupress, for the raid. You are nobody's god? Yes? What? God? My god, this is amazing. Oh, you are not. Uh, okay, enjoy some new years. Thank you. Um, I got to get back to mine. Oh, yes, yes. But why did you raid if you are still streaming? I don't get it. You are still streaming, right? But uh, thanks for uh, reading or hosting. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, bye, bye, bye. Okay, press. All right, let's see if my stream is still working. I am under pressure. Now I'm under it's pressure. Not. So I'm thinking all Bishop right. E5. Um, also, I'm e5. going to finish all uh, streams. Now I'm under it's pressure. So follow. No, so Bishop. E5. Now I'm under so follow. No, so Bishop. Okay. E5. I can still hear him. No. <laughs> no, so Bishop. Okay. <laughs> I can still hear know. him. But all right, let's let's uh, finish this up <laughs> with ourselves here. See what see what we can figure out after Rook C three. How dire it is. Um. Because Wang Hao managed to still be up. I mean, I don't think it's. You don't think it should be dire. I don't think it should be dire yet. Okay. You know. There, there has to be some way for, for White to collect his pieces and defend against that B-Pawn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think Wang Hao has a good start of it. Maybe he should leave the D-Pawn hanging. Um, so he plays... Maybe he should... Yeah, maybe he should just play like Rook A6, Rook D3... Let that pawn go. If black takes on d3, can he play rook b1, or is that too much? No, rook b1's not good because of rook e4, and then rook to b4. Yeah, no, this is not good. I mean, okay. I, I feel like the way he played was fine. Okay. But just somewhere he 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 went off. Like maybe. Maybe here, d5. d5? Oh, you're trying to get your knight to that side. Yeah, to get... The, uh, my, my, right, I'm trying to get my knight to d4. Clever, that makes some sense. All right, let's try that. Um. Yeah. I mean, these rooks are really well placed, so it's going to be tough to fight this pawn here. It's a lot of counterplay. Right. right. Um, and we've got back rank stuff to consider. But okay, let's try d5. Um, so black's options are try and prevent knight d4, 
or attack attack e4. I don't feel like rook e8 is going to be a problem for white, though. So I mean, you just gave me d5 and put your rook back on d8. So maybe rook so. to d3 to keep the knight stuck. Yeah, possibly. Rook d3. And my options are now king f1 to e2 or rook to b1. Uh, I don't really like either one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a better option, huh? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I was looking at g3 somehow. If, if g3? I can that work. But then they can just take and take yeah, my, and take. Yeah, and then take f4 and then somehow get into a drawn pawn ending. Okay, and then you want to play like d6 or something. Certainly. Or maybe not. Maybe here. King g2 and my d is f3 and to cut this rook off. I'll leave it stuck there, huh? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think d6 actually is pretty strong. Like... King g2, okay, king g2, d6. It does feel like white's got enough counterplay here, right? I mean, if we just play d6, though, that pawn is so strong, right? White can't be worse. Well, I mean, I don't know. Well, you can't stop rook d1 from white I mean, I guess black. So. Like, the pawn's okay, so obviously better than the b pawn now. If black plays b4, you just, yeah, play, you just play d7, right? Yeah, yeah. Black's, yeah. No, definitely, I think, I think d5... I mean, okay, so d5 e5, is a nice idea. You know, e5, the idea is to cut the bishop off, cut the bishop off, but mm -hmm. I mean, at the same time, your knight now has no squares. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's play Let's know. play d5, d5 and say black continues like in the game with b4. Like just trying to improve the strength of his b-pawn instead of trying to cut us off. And now we go knight d4. And he's going to play a move like rook c3, let's say. Would be comparable to how he played in the game. A3, maybe. Rook a3? Well, rook a3, probably. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, I like that move. That's better. And maybe problematic. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's, that's, the, that's the strength and annoyance of this pawn. No, I rated oh, to give gosh. that other guy viewers, you know? That was the deal, you know? We support, we're supposed to support other people. We got we got the previous Chess TV streamer rating us, I think, and then we raid the next one. So just, just sharing it around. But uh, we're not quite done with this crazy endgame. Hikaru won two of these. He won two endgames down a pawn yesterday. It's kind of like madness. And then he won an opposite color right. bishop ending with against... equal pawns. And then he won that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Crazy. So the end Crazy. game skills were on full display. This rook a3 move is really annoying, yeah, Josiah. I know. It's, it's very complicated. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You're just going to shove that pawn. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, it, it ended up happening anyways, so. Yeah, well, don't give up on d5 so fast. d5, b4. I mean, yeah, maybe. So, so b4. Do we need to play then... d5 or e5? Don't we just need to. Don't we just need to get rid of the back rank, play like king f1, king e2 instead of our pawns, maybe? Should we look at another idea? So if we try G3 again, takes... You want to try G3 again? And we try this again? Yeah, this this may be okay for white. I'm almost more afraid on G3 of black moving the bishop and then our knight's still hanging and we still need to come up with something to do. Yeah, so my idea is like after I move the rook, I put a king here. Uh, somebody's saying that Hikaru's first endgame win was even more impressive because he had nothing. He had, like, no counterplay. He had, like, a symmetrical structure, but he was down a passed pawn. But what's more impressive is that about this game is that this game is against Wang Hao, who's, like, a world-class GM, whereas the other game was against a, a Fide Master. So there's sort of, like, to do this 
against a lower rated player, someone's like, well, he's got 500 rating points on him, whatever that sort of translates into. But here, I mean, he's playing against a top player. Yeah. It's very magical. Right, right. Um, okay, so now you play King G2. So you're King G2 maybe? Now your king's out of the way of these tactics. Um, let's play like rook to c3 for black. And rook oh, to... maybe rook a3 again? Okay. You can if you want to. Um, I think now I trade. Oh, I guess I don't have to either. That bishop doesn't have that many squares. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. With my G3, King G2 inserted, like, it's not as dangerous as it was before. Yeah, it's those back rank tactics that are really killer, to be honest. Because, like, here, you know, whatever, black plays, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. plays some move with the bishop, and you play rook to B1, and it just... I don't get this feeling like the pawn's about to kill. I mean, it's counterplay for sure, yeah, but we've, that, got, with, we've got all kinds of resources. With that back rank, I was really feeling, you know, a little anguish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But this seems reasonable. I don't know. Maybe he needed, maybe he needed to try this d5 g3 idea. Mm -hmm. um, because e5, if you play g3, it's really not, not as as threatening. So say if you play g3 here, which which forces rook takes f3 because this bishop has no squares. Mm -hmm. uh, this pawn, this puzzle, this pawn's not as far advanced. Yeah, and you don't so... have the pawn on e4, keeping the rook out of the game temporarily. So. In moments, this rook exactly, becomes strong again. Exactly. I mean, I suppose right. you could try something like rook d6. Very weird. But the idea is just like trying to still keep that rook out of the way. And then on b3, rook b1. Yeah. I mean, this rook is... It's going to eventually come around. Right? <laughs> it may. It may. But we're going to try and... We've made its path really slow, right? So. Oh, no. Maybe you do get that, actually. Right? This king might so be able not. to deal with some of this. Well, no, I can still rook f3. I'm going to go to... Ah, uh -huh. okay. No, you get there in time. Yeah. I mean, black's not in any danger. Or actually, you don't. Because you, don't. you can always come back here. No, 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 no. no. I'll come here. What did you find? Oh, I can... Okay, yeah. Okay, never mind, never mind. Yeah, but I mean, in this variation, we definitely see how much better it would be to have the d5 pawn running instead of the e pawn sitting on e5. Um, yeah. But even here, it feels no, like... d5, e4, so... This feels drawish even here, though. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think my move Maybe rook d6 is important, right? Ideas. This seems important. It's a rook d6 yeah, move. Yeah, no, I think, I think the rook d6 idea is very good. I mean, certainly, I think trade it, if you could trade off the bishop and the knight, uh, it's better than what happens because some somehow the bishop stay on the board for the rest of the game. Right? Maybe b3, rook, b1, now you want to get the rook out. Like, maybe that's what you need to prioritize. Because now once the king comes here, you tie him to the second rank. So if he, if he comes to defend against the b-pawn, you lose both your kingside pawns. And if he stays here, then black eventually threatens. So what if when you come rook f3, then... So what if you come rook f3 and then... Or, or... Yeah. Go for it. So oh, rook c6 yeah, rook you're going to say? Maybe I cut it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Plus three. Logical. Mm -hmm. um, b2. And then, and then here. rook c2 draw. Yeah. Well, you, even, I might be winning here, actually. Uh, you're not going to win. I can just play rook d3 for black. Oh, true. If there are no longer any scenarios where white wins. <laughs> <laughs> the material's equal, and yeah, 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 no, yeah. But we're holding. Okay, but like, yeah, we're yeah. holding. Yes. So basically, so he plays this e5 move, which we don't necessarily love. Doubles the rooks on the a file. It's just not clear what they're doing there. And then this b pawn is so strong, black doesn't even have to do anything with that bishop. Doesn't have to waste any time with anything else. Yeah. And this move here is winning. I remember I looked at it. Yeah, he, he, I knew for sure this was over. He just over. played this. Uh, he he played this g three move too late. B two, 
um, white could play rook b1, rook c1, rook b2. So that would have been a mistake. Right. So rook c1 was the was the right move. And then it's just winning. Nothing nothing to do about the b2 threat. If pawn takes bishop, he would play b2. And it's over. I mean, black simply gets a whole queen. Yeah. So... I mean, is there so, something I mean, better than G3 as he played? I don't know how he's supposed to stop the B-pawn anymore. It seems like he spent tempos playing Rook A1, Rook A7, and none of those moves actually changed anything about his back rank, and this pawn was getting stronger. So yeah, yeah it makes sense I at some point you're losing. this G3 idea over here? Yeah. I think G3 here, right? Yeah. So, like we said, here, maybe G3. Instead of uh, Rook EA1, right here. Yeah. 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 That should still be that should still be a game. I mean the problem is rook EA one and rook A seven end up being two lost moves, right? That could have been G three, King G two, it could have been King F one, King E two, it could have been I don't know, D five, D six even probably would have been better. Yeah. because um, there's probably scenarios where, you know, you can play D seven and black can't do the tactic they want. Um, okay, well, I think we managed to figure it out, huh? Yeah, I, th I think... Uh, That's pretty satisfying. That was a tricky endgame.